What's going on, guys? It's your boy, John Liquidator, coming back with another video. So it looked like Kaylin Clark, former head coach, Lisa Bluter, weighs in on Team USA roster. And Jennifer Wazadi of the USA Committee breaks her silence about Kaylin Clark admission and being blocked from joining the roster. Guys, for this one here, we got to go all the way up to Indy. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> a lot to unpack in this video right here. More information is coming out about Kaylin Clark and this Team USA situation. Jennifer Rosati broke her silence in regards to Kaylin Clark not being on Team USA and Kaylin Clark former head coach Lisa Bluter. Oh, she ain't playing no games. She set the record straight about everything. With all that being said, let's roll the footage of Lisa Bluter right now. Pleasure, and I'm still not used to hearing that word former before my uh, title and my name there. It still feels weird. Hey, it feels weird for the rest of us. I was sick to, I was sick at heart when I heard you were hanging up your spurs. Uh, because you're you're obviously one of the greats of the in the entire history of the game, and we're going to get to your record. But first, I want to talk to you about the news of the day that everyone is discussing around the coffee stations at work. That's your former player Caitlin Clark being left off the USA Olympic roster. Um, Lisa, what are your thoughts about that? And um, is there a rationale for that that's fair? It's it's such a controversial topic as everything around Caitlin seems to be lately. Yeah, I was wondering how long it was going to take to get to that question, Sally. Um, I'm know, a journalist. I had to go right there. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, she is a, you know, I, I obviously would love to have seen her on that team. Um, she's represented USA basketball many times. She's won three gold medals. Um, but we have to remember, it is the hardest game or team to make. Anywhere. It is the hardest team to make. And the 12 women that they have chosen are exceptional women. The only but I have is what about the future? Because this team has not lost a game since 1992. A game they haven't lost. So they're a great group. They're experienced. There's no doubt we're going to win another gold medal in Paris. But what about the fact that in four years, we're going to be playing in L.A. How are we preparing for that? That would be my only but. You know, th this is my question, too. So Diana Tarazi is 40 years old, over 40 years old. She's going to be hanging it up. Sue Bird just retired. There's some great younger guards on that team, and obviously they've got to integrate new leadership. And I would have thought that Caitlin Clark will be integrated into that process. But was it too soon? Was it, was it just a cycle too soon? I mean, Who's going? Who, in your mind, is the new Sue Bird of this organization, this USA Basketball organization? Yeah, I, I couldn't answer that, Sally. I'm not sure, but I, I think it would have benefited Caitlin if she would have had another year of experience and maybe not be coming right off of her collegiate season where she's pretty tired, as you can see when in her play right now. You know, when she's tired, she struggles a little bit. When she's fresh, as in the other night, she has 30 points. Uh, so, you know, her body needs a rest. And, and the silver lining is, is that her body will get some rest during this break. Uh, and I think that's what we have to focus on is the silver lining to this whole deal. You know, she said an interesting thing to her her and her WNBA coach, Christy Sides. She said they woke up a monster. Uh, how many times have you heard a reaction like that from Caitlin Clark to a challenge? Yeah, not those exact words, but certainly, I mean, any time that, she, somebody doubts her, somebody says she can't do something, she's going to go prove them wrong. So definitely she's in a position to really be motivated highly to uh, continue, you know, growing her game and being successful and making the next Olympics in four years. That was Caitlin Clark, former head coach Lisa Bluer, laying in on her not being picked to be on the team. But just like she said, bruh, Caitlin Clark got a long career ahead of her. And in the next four years, there's no doubt in my mind that Caitlin Clark will be the star of the Olympic team. Moving on to another story. So it looked like USA committee spokesperson Jennifer Rosati broke her silence why they didn't pick Caitlin Clark, bruh. It's being reported that USA Basketball Selection Committee chair 
Jen Rosati said the committee was aware of the outside noise and pressure to select Kaylee Clark. And here's what she had to say in a recent interview with the Associated Press. Here's the basketball criteria that we were given as a committee and how do we evaluate our players based on that. Rosati told the Associated Press in a recent interview, and when you base your decision on criteria, there were other players that were harder to cut because they checked all of the boxes. Then sometimes it comes down to the position, style of play for Coach Cheryl Reeve, and then sometimes it's just a vote. It will be irresponsible for us to talk about her in a way other than how she would impact the play of the team, Rosati said, because it wasn't the purview of our committee to decide how many people would watch or how many people would root for the team U.S. It was our purview to create the best team we could for Cheryl Reeve. So she's letting it be known. They weren't tripping off how many views they was going to get. They was tripping off who was going to be the best team for Cheryl Reeve. But at the end of the day, this shows you the mindset of this committee and the mindset of the people that's running women's basketball. They're not thinking marketing. They're not thinking viewership. They're not thinking financial increase for these WNBA women moving forward. Adding Caitlin Clark to that team would raise the revenue up tremendously. They already in negotiation with getting meteorized deal done. And you want to know why? Because Caitlin Clark is in the WNBA. Do you think the WNBA will be negotiating meteorized deals if it wasn't for Caitlin Clark? Let's just be for real here now. Take a second. Caitlin Clark has altered the trajectory of the future of the WNBA. People can say what they want about them on a nice growing spiral. But before Caitlin Clark got there, bro, people was not checking for WNBA like that. Now that she dare y'all trying to get new meteorized deal. She basically 10x y'all future, bruh. Get down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts about this. Keep them bells on because you know what? I'ma bring you the news. And like always, man, until next time, shake the haters off. This is ridiculous. I'm out of here. Peace out. I'm gonna be in the Olympic selection pool. Like I just got out of college and just even be in that conversation is huge. Um and then to the women that were selected, like you look at that roster and that roster is really really talented like you know a lot of players I've already played and competed against and are really really good and I hope the conversations about you know those 12 and them having the opportunity that you know a lot of people don't really get um, in their lifetime so um, I'll be cheering for them I'll be rooting for them and you know I hope they they go out and win gold I know they will they'll dominate um, but yeah I think it just gives me something more to work for and shows me ways I can get better and um, hopefully in four years when four years comes around I have another opportunity to try to be on that team. Were you surprised at all by the way social media kind of blew up about it, or do you even look at social media? To be honest, I haven't seen really anything. I'm sure, I'm sure it blew up, but I feel like it would that would have been the case one way or the other. You know, whether I was on the team or whether I was not on the team, I'm sure it would have been you know both ways. And um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't read that, so I don't know what specifically was talked about. I'm, I'm sure it's talked about. I know it's talked about, but uh, I look at it and I, you know, whether I was on the team or not on the team is going to be talked about and. Um, you know, I hope the conversation stays around those 12 girls and, you know, what they're going to do in, in Paris. So you're talking to the refs uh, a few times. Just kind of, what were those conversations about? It seemed like you were kind of appealing to the refs a little bit. Yeah, just getting clarification on a few fouls, um, not anything. Like, they were good conversations. They were trying to help me out and t show me ways that, you know, how it was a foul and what I can do on the offensive end to get a similar call. But um, it wasn't, like, anything bad by any means. Coach was talking about... Um, Sorry, thank you. Uh, given that you are a huge basketball fan, we are located in Connecticut right now. The big basketball news is Dan Hurley not going to the Lakers instead of moving on with college basketball. What does that mean for college basketball and just for basketball in general? I mean, shoot, two really good options. He could have, you know, I mean, he had his choice. I mean, obviously, I have no idea what the conversations were, but um, I really admire him. I, I love his intensity. I think. The way he coaches the game is amazing. The way he coaches his players is amazing and holds them accountable um, and really gets the most out of them. I've really loved watching them over the course of the last couple of years. And uh, I think it's cool he's staying in college basketball. I think he really loves it. And I think he loves being around being around um, those young men. And um, obviously he makes them great. So I've been a big fan of his and big fan of his program. Um, and they've been fun to watch.
coach uh, in post game was talking about just not being pleased with the effort, I guess, all around from the team. What was her message to you all in terms of that? Yeah, I think it's just like we can't coach effort. Um, this is a team you can't come out and be lackadaisical against. Like they're just they're just that good. They're gonna punch you in the mouth, and I don't think we had it from the jump. And you know, obviously that's a little disappointing. Um, but you know that's something they can't coach. Effort is not something they can coach. They can coach X and O's, but um, they can't coach that. And I thought we just could have played with a lot better energy. I thought we let little things on the offensive end frustrate us, and we didn't play good defense. Um, you know, it, it was seemed like everything they got was easy. Nothing was challenged. Uncontested threes. We were giving up and ones. Um, you know, we put them at the free throw line, and that was the key to the game. Like you can't foul this team. They lead the league in free throws attempted. I'm pretty sure, um, and that's exactly what we did. Um, so you know, it's not a recipe to, to win many games. Did you hear the fans chanting, we want <laughs> I did a little bit, yeah, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of in light of that um, and her challenging you guys in that way, how do you guys want to respond? Yeah, I think you have a, a great opportunity to come out and, you know, we play Atlanta and then we play Chicago, two games that, you know, feel like kind of must wins. I don't want to say they're must wins, but two very winnable games for our group and obviously one of the teams we've we beat and another team we played in preseason, so teams that we're kind of familiar with, but um, you know, a great opportunity. We get to go back home and play on our home court and uh, really show show what we're capable of and, and respond. I think that's going to going to be what she's looking for, and that's what we should want out of ourselves too. Caitlin, what was the most disappointing thing for you in the first half? Just the defensive effort, or yeah, I think the defensive effort. Um, it didn't feel like our offense had much flow to it. It just felt super choppy. It felt like we took hard contested twos. Um, but, I mean, it starts on defense, you know, we have to...